Namaste everyone and welcome to Wellness Mantra. Whenever I say that I'm a practitioner of yoga, this one thing that people tell me is, oh my God, I can't do all the balancing that you do. Uh, yes, while yoga is all about balancing, it's not just the act of balancing physically. It's not just about doing a balancing asana. It's about balancing your body and mind. Uh, balancing to your, your mind to an extent where you start seeing everything in a state of equilibrium. You don't really um, get too excited, get too low. You find a state of balance where your mind is able to react to everything in a very pleasant and uh, calm manner. Uh, when we try to achieve the balance of mind, why do we do asanas or practice postures? These asanas actually help or tend to put our body into a restrictive uh, mode where your mind is able to find stillness and when you start finding stillness in um, your in the asanas your breath becomes one with your body and as your breath becomes one with your body your mind is able to calm down so that is primarily the reason why we do asanas it's not just to keep your body healthy and fit while it also complements in that direction it also helps to keep your mind or the frame of your mind balanced right talking about balance why don't we start today's session with a balance posture now before we do the balancing postures let's do a little bit of a warm-up are you ready to do it with me let's start all right stand in Tadasana or Shitala Tadasana which is relaxed tree posture where you can slightly keep your legs away balance make sure your spine is nice and, nice and straight you feel your core engage and you feel like you're standing nice and tall very good now from here we're going to breathe in raise our right leg up hug your knee towards your chest and down breathe in and down breathe in and down breathe in and down one more round breathe in down breathe in and out breathe in and out breathe in and out very good now we try and keep our legs facing sideways and see if we can pull your hands in lift your knees towards your shoulder like this breathe in and out in out in if your leg just lifts that much that's all right just try as much as you can okay breathe in out breathe in out breathe in and 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 out good job all right now let's stand by almost hip width legs apart and put your hands on your hip we're going to do a hip rotation one with absolute awareness pushing your hip to the side then trying and making a circle pushing it to the front to the other side and then to the back all right now try and keep your torso as steady as possible while you move only your hip try focus 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 only the hip the torso remaining straight all right you will feel a nice stretch in the hip your pelvic region which is really good and now the other way around one, two, three, four, and keep going. Keep stretching. All right. That was nice. All right, just for a few head rotations. First, your wrist. All right, now we do the entire elbow the other way. Now your entire arm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The other way. Other hand. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. The other way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good job. Now for your shoulders, breathe in and down. Breathe in and out. In and out. In. Finally, for your head, as I mentioned earlier, let's do the head. One big circle with the head. Now the other way. That felt nice. All right. Now for a restrained head moment, place your hands under your chin. And try and see if you can force your head down while you give it a little bit of resistance with your hand. So I'm actually resisting my hand from pulling my head down. So I'm using a little bit of hand resistance to try and see if I can push my head down. Yet there is a resistance. Let's do it. Now from behind, I'm going to try and drop my head back, but I'm going to give a little bit of resistance with my hands. So, well done. Now to one side, I'm trying to turn this way, but I'm going to give a little bit of resistance with this hand. And, to the other side, I want to turn this way, but this hand is going to resist my head. All right? And don't do it so harsh that you go that way, okay? Take it easy. <laughs> All right. That was good. Now, to start off with a balancing posture. Now, what do we do at the beginning to balance? Hmm. The one trick about finding a good balance or gaining a good balance is to put your focus at one single point and that truly helps us with balancing. If, you, if your mind is at unrest and you have so many things going into your mind, then naturally your eyes reflect that and you keep looking everywhere around. And when that happens, you seldom are able to balance. The trick is just one point, all right? Not the entire figure, just one point in front of you. All right, I usually suggest my class to look at the tip of their mat. Now I'm going to look at the tip of the camera or right there. <laughs> All right, so what balancing asana shall we practice today? How about this? The Vrikshasana, yes, the Vrikshasana is one of those beginners balancing postures. Uh, looks easy, but not all that easy sometimes because again, your mind needs to be balanced and focused to, to perform this. Now, how do we do the Vrikshasana? For Vrikshasana, you have to make sure that your weight is beautifully and evenly distributed under the sole of your feet. I'll start off lifting my right leg up. You breathe in, take your right leg up. See if you can place your right leg just beneath your groin, in your inner thigh. Now the one thing that you have to make sure is you don't put too much pressure on your knee as you stand. Now, If you can't put, take your leg all the way up, this is all right, this is all right. Try and see if you can point your toes downwards like this instead of this. All right. So these are a few things that you have to remember. Now, if you have a, a concern or illness of vertigo or high or low blood pressure, I would suggest that you refrain from this practice. If you have a hip uh, dislocation or a hip surgery or a hip 
problem as such. Try not to do this. But otherwise, the Brikshasana helps to strengthen your entire legs. Uh, it is highly beneficial for people who have uh, uh, flat footedness and if you have a diagnosed flat foot, uh, it helps to strengthen the tendons uh, and ligaments in your feet. Rikshasana also helps to improve the hip or pelvic strength. Uh, as you practice this more frequently, you'll see that your legs gain the strength that you need. You feel more confident and you feel that your mind is slowly becoming calm. That is the one thing that we all want to do right now, isn't it? Just to find some peace of mind. Let's do this Rikshasana together. All right, stand in Tadasana. Legs together, hands by the side of your body. Breathe in, take your right leg up, place it inside your thigh, trying to point your toes downwards. All right, wait there. See if you can find your balance. Make sure you're comfortable. And now for beginners, you may opt to do the Namaskara Mudra in front of your chest. Breathe normally and stay there. Now for those students who have already practiced the Vrikshasana, let's do it the entire whole way, taking your hands all the way up and holding the Namaskara Mudra above your head. Stay there, breathe normally. Make sure you have a one-pointed gaze in front of you. Make sure your focal point remains the same. The benefits of Vrikshasana is, as you stay there, I want you to imagine all the qualities of a Vriksha or a tree. It helps to give life. It contributes to creating more oxygen. The trunk supports the entire tree. Very beautifully rooted, balanced. See all these qualities within you as you stand there in Rikshasana. Now breathe out, take your hands down and pull your legs down. Relax in Shitila Tadasana. You'd observe that your legs do feel a slight bit of strain, especially the feet and the arch of your feet. You'd feel a slight tug at the arch of your feet. Your, the feet is getting stronger. Your entire leg gets stronger. Whichever leg was on the floor, that, legs get, get le that leg's leg gets stronger. <laughs> All right. Now, let's do it to the other side with the left leg up and the right leg on the ground. Let's breathe in taking your left leg up, placing it inside your thigh, pointed downwards, toes pointed downwards, get ready, beginners can place their hands in front of their chest, breathe normally, beaming big smile on your face, be confident and understand that you can do this. Breathe in and stay, smile, the trick is pointed awareness, just focus at one point. Imbibe the qualities of a tree as you stand there in Rikshasana, the tree posture. Strongly rooted, never mowing. Providing shelter. Now breathe out and slowly bring your hands down. Slowly release your legs and stand in Shitala Tadasana. So that was the Vrikshasana. Now for today let's practice a few variations of the Trikonasana. You did practice the Trikonasana or the triangle posture last time. Today we will do the Trikonasana along with a few other asanas which are very similar to the Trikonasana and will also contribute a few more to, to benefits of a few more parts of the body. Now, what were the benefits of Trikonasana? Trikonasana again helps to strengthen your legs, it helps to lengthen the hamstrings, stretches out your hamstrings, give a nice tug to your uh, lower back. Mm. These are a few benefits of Trikonasana. Now, if you do have a heavier, severe case of migraine, I would suggest you refrain from doing it. These versions or variations of Trikonasana that I will be doing today, please make sure that you observe caution as you practice this. Make sure you do it only according to what your body is comfortable. All right, now to do this Trikonasana, let's stand to one side of the mat and breathe in, take your legs by almost a meter apart. 
Uh, now if this is not very comfortable for you, you can try bringing your legs a little more closer. But as you advance in your practice, I want you to try and bring your legs uh, slightly apart by more than a little meter. Now make sure your toes are pointed forward and I'm going to be moving to the right side first, which means I'm going to open my right toe to the side. I'm going to breathe in, raise both my arms and as I breathe out, I'm going to go down and hold on to my ankles. Now look through your hand all the way through your fingers to up the sky. Stay there, breathe normally, have a smile. Be determined that you will stay there. Feel the muscles of your leg. For advanced students, you can place your hands on the ground. Otherwise, you can place your hands on your calf or if that is still not possible, you can still do this. But try and go all the way down to your calf. Now the one thing you have to remember while standing here is make sure you're standing and bending sideways, giving a nice and fine stretch to your side, engaging your core, nice and strong foot grip, feeling the strength of your leg, stretching your hamstring and observing that. Look through your fingers all the way up, so your vision's staring at the sky, smiling face. Breathe, breathe normally and stay. Now breathe in and slowly come up. Breathe out, drop your hands and turn your feet. Breathe in, flex your knee and bounce back. So every time you flex your knee and bounce back, the lesser chances of injury than to jump back. Now to the other side, the same Trikonasana. Breathing in, moving our legs by about a meter and a half. Breathing out, toes pointed to the side. Breathe in, hands parallel to the ground. I'm going to go down, sink into my Trikonasana. Reaching to my ankles, looking through my fingers all the way up to the sky. Try not to lean forward or backward as you stand there in this position. The stretch has to be felt on the side of your body, not on your back. Now if your neck feels very strained holding it like this and looking up, you are allowed to slowly do this as well for a beginner. But eventually you should learn to lift up and look all the way up. Breathe in and slowly bring your hands parallel to the ground. Breathe out while you drop your hands and turn your feet. Breathe in and flex back. So that was Trikonasana. Now what is Trikonasana? It's a equilateral triangle. So that's almost what we created with our legs. So that is why the name Trikonasana or the triangle posture. Now from Trikonasana, we will do the Parivritta Trikonasana or the twisted triangle. How do we do the Parivritta Trikonasana? Again, standing to one side of the mat, I move my legs by about a meter and a half. Ensure that my toes are pointed forward. I'm going to come up. My hands are going to be parallel to the ground. Have a big smile on your face. Now I'm going to go down from my lower back. This also engages your abdominal region. It's highly beneficial for uh, people with abdominal concerns. Um, so let's do this. Now if you have a, di a, a problem of diarrhea or uh, any such tummy problems, refrain from doing this practice. <laughs> All right. Now going from your lower back, stretching your hamstrings, keeping your back straight like a table. Stay there for a moment as you breathe out. Now I'm going to reach out with one hand towards my left ankle and point my other hand towards the sky. Try and get both your shoulders into one line, stay there and breathe normally, most important. And it is very essential that you turn and look up at your fingers, through your fingers into the sky. Stay there, breathe normally, smile. Now if you feel any strain doing this posture, just smile and say, I will be able to do it. I'm going to do it. And 
you really can do it. The trick is to breathe, breathe normally, enjoy every breath that you take. Now if, for beginners, if you can't reach all the way down like this, you can start with this. Yeah? And now from here, you breathe in, stay there. Breathe out for a moment, still stay there. Now breathe in, come up, breathe out and drop your hands and breathe in and jump back. Now let's do the same thing to the other side. So breathe in, taking your legs away by almost a meter and a half, breathing out, standing there. Make sure your toes are pointed forward and not this way. So not at an angle, toes pointed forward, breathe in, breathe out, go down into a table posture with your back being straight. Now breathe out, reach out with your right hand to your left hand to your right leg. Stay there, feel the twist in your body, hands pointed upwards, gaze all the way through your fingers to straight up to the sky. Stay there, enjoy that stretch and remember to breathe normally. So it is very essential to hold a posture for a few seconds because otherwise you don't really gain the benefit of doing that posture. So we have to try, breathe normally and with each breath you will realize that this posture is getting easier. Now breathe in and Come back to the table push. Breathe out and breathe in again. Dropping your hands down, breathe out, flexing your knee and jumping back. That was nice. What a beautiful stretch. I can feel that stretch all along my leg. And that's exactly what we're trying to do, isn't it? All right. Now, now that we have done the trikonas, now the triangle posture, we've also done the Parivritta Trikonas now or the twisted triangle we'll do one more which is called the Parsha Konasana. Okay so what is Parsha Konasana? Parsha Konasana is a right angled triangle. All right now Parsha Konasana is a little more complicated than the Trikonasana or the uh, Parivritta Trikonasana. Here you engage your legs uh, it is very close or similar to the Veerabhadrasana or the warrior posture which we will also check today. Uh, but to start off, uh, Parsha Trikonasana also helps to expand your chest region, helps to give that fine stretch to your side or side muscles as well and also helps to open up your groin region, helps to stabilize your hip, it also helps to stre strengthen your legs. And now to know what Parsha Konasana looks like, I will show it to you once and then we will do it together, all right? So to do the Parsha Konasana, I have to take my legs slightly more than a meter and a half. And now I'll try and point my right leg to the right side, take my hands up, breathe out and try to create a 90 degree angle between my feet and my thighs. All right, from here, I'm going to lower my hand and try to place it on the side of my leg. From here, I take my hand, hold it by the side of my ear, stay, look through my fingers all the way to the other side. And that is Parshvatrikonasana, trying to create a line all the way from here. All right? So this is why I said the Parsha Trikonasana helps to stretch the body completely. It also helps to open up your groin region as you open your hip to the side. Yeah, and it also helps with stretching the side muscles of your abdomen. Uh, let's do this together. All right, are you ready? Stand to the side of your mat. Make a big wide V with your legs. Now point your right toe to the right side, breathe in, take your hands up, breathe out, bring your right hand by the outside of your right leg. Now if you can't really do that, you are allowed to place your elbow on your thighs and rest it here as you take your left hand all the way up, touching your ears and pointing it to the other side. Try to create a line from your leg all the way up to your finger that is up here. 
stay there, breathe normally. As you stand here, what I want you to try and remember is make sure your chest is pointed forwards and you're not doing this because that way you're going out of alignment. I want you to sink in, make sure you have a 90 degree angle and stay like this. Breathe normally. Now if you can, go all the way down, place your hands there and stay. And finally, when you breathe in, you raise yourself up, point your toes back, drop your hands down, flex your knee and bounce back. How about we do it to the other side? All right. You'll start feeling a little warm by now and that's what makes it feel so good because you've done so little and yet the body has stretched so much that you start feeling warm and it's such a great feeling. All right, let's do the Parsha Konasana to, to the other side. One, make sure it's a nice big V and from here, point your left toe to the left side. Breathe in, breathe out, lower your hand as you make a right angle between your leg and your thighs. Now take the other hand up, all the way up, touching your ears and looking towards the other side. Stay there, breathe normally. Remember, chest facing forward, not to go to the side. Stay there, breathe, breathe, breathe. Like I told you, there is an option to rest here if you want to, all right? So if this is what you're comfortable with, please go ahead and do only this much. Feel that nice stretch along your groin region as you stay here, okay? Now breathe in and come up. Breathe out, just point it back, hands drop down. Breathe in and jump back. So that was the Trikonasana series for today. There is a slight variation and it becomes another asana just like I told you, the Veerabhadrasana or the warrior posture. But for today, I guess just the Trikonasana has got, got me to do warm up and feel good. So I guess we'll end today's episode with just the Trikonasanas. I hope you practice the Trikonasanas not just once, but keep watching the videos again and again and keep repeating it uh, as much as you want so that you gain mastery over your asanas. Uh, hope you enjoyed this session. I'll see you later. Goodbye.